okay in the last class uh, we defined uh, how we are going to measure performance of an algorithm in an unrealizable case so we defined performance of an algorithm in terms of its expected regret and then we said when we are going to say a given hypothesis class is learnable right so we basically said that if there exists an algorithm which guarantees sublinear regret on a given hypothesis class we are going to call it as learnable and we define what we mean by sublinear regret so today what we will see is is there an algorithm which achieves sublinear regret for the case when it was realizable we actually saw two algorithm right uh, consistent algorithm and halving algorithm which both made the hypothesis class learnable as long as it was of finite size so now how about when we have unrealizable case so in the unrealizable case i am just recapping so we define expected regret of an algorithm a which we also substituted with h and t is equals to basically said superpower all my sequences So recall our setup that the sequence is generated by the environment which we allowed it to be like adversarially generated. So, so you should be careful with this notation when I say this, this is all possible sequences of length t. Okay? So, but we put some restriction on the environment. What are that restriction? We said that environment cannot see the prediction you made in that round before it outputs the true label right and uh, for the learner also we gave him flexibility we said that he can randomize his predictions right because of that in every round what we are interested in is the probability with which he is going to give a label 1 instead of exactly what is the label so this is what we have done in the last class so what we are going to see is today is there exist an algorithm A which will make this quantity sublinear in T? Okay, if that is the case according to the def definition, then we are able to learn my hypothesis class H. Okay. So this is the first term we are going to do. So in this class today, we are going to prove this theorem.
So, what we are going to say is for every finite hypothesis class H, right now we are going to take it finite, there exists an online learning algorithm and I have written in the bracket classification because we are only interested in classification here, uh, that to binary classification, okay, whose predictions come from 0, 1. You remember like earlier it was y t hat, but now I have allowed it to be p t after taking expectation and p t can be any value in the interval 0, 1 and uh, whose regret is given like this, okay, fine. So, now notice this, what we are saying is whatever hypothesis h you are going to use, if you are going to use the hypothesis h always, this is what the loss you are going to get over time here at t. And this is the one which is coming from your algorithm, where p t is what your algorithm is making. And now we are saying whichever you are going to fix. So, this is like you are comparing your performance of this algorithm against the performance of a fixed hypothesis h. You see this? Okay. So, if I just write this expression, just forget this. So, what I am doing? I am going to use the hypothesis h in every round. If I have been using that, this is the loss I would have got. This is the loss I would have got if I am using my algorithm. So, this is how I am going to compare against fixed hypothesis h. But now, what this result is saying that irrespective of which fixed h you are going to use, this bond holds, right. So, in then, so this is then, this is same, same at least going to same as this, like instead of particular h, you are going to take in over h, this bound should hold, because this is true irrespective of which h you are going to choose here. So, okay. So, if you just look at this, this is how I am comparing against the performance when I am using a particular hypothesis h. If I now telling, okay, this performance holds irrespective of which h you are going to use, that is whatever hypothesis you are going to use. In particular, you may be using the best one. Even in, in that case, uh, that algorithm, there exists an algorithm which is going to give you this guarantee. So, if I have this guarantee and I am claiming that there exists such an online learning algorithm, then this hypothesis class H is learnable, right, because then by definition this is already subject. <coughs> Now, the question is what is that algorithm, okay, fine. So, before we set what that algorithm is, that algorithm is going to be weighted majority algorithm. So, instead of specifying that algorithm specially for this case, we are going to state it for slightly general case. I please direct your questions here, what is that? Two log cardinality of h t everything under square root. Right now, see this bound, it is irrespective of what sequence, right? If you just to do soup, it should also be holding. So, in general, like it is just like this is upper bounded by this, I have just slightly written it in a different format, okay. Okay, so fine. So, let us do this mapping, yeah. So, right now we are just worried about learnability definitions, right. So, then as we progress we will see is this the best we could do. So, we exactly ask this question when we are doing the realizable case, right. In the realizable case, we had one consistent uh, algorithm which made the hypothesis learnable but its bound was like what cardinal rate of h minus 1. Then immediately ask this question is this bound tight and we look for a better algorithm which happened to be halving algorithm there. So, we will see if this is best or we can do better here. But right now I first want to answer the question whether first it is learnable. Then comes the question is this the best. So, what we are going to know studying is called. This weighted majority is a classical algorithm which 
tells you if you have a given set of experts let's say and all of them are going to give you what to be predicted in that round how i should pick the best among this available experts okay so for example let's say like you have to do some investment or something and uh, there are couple of uh, experts available but not necessary that each of these experts are going to be doing well in the scenario so you want to be every time you want to be going with advice of one of these experts you always want to go with an advice from an expert who happens to be making minimum mistakes right but the question is how to identify a priori you don't know you know all maybe experts but who is the best experts for this uh, environment you are dealing with you may not know a priori and you want to identify this so in that context we are first going to define this weighted majority algorithm and then map it to the class we have so this is i'm going to call this as wm so this is usually called this wm is So currently in our setup we have some set of hypotheses right each hypothesis in the set will give you what should be the prediction what you are basically looking for which is the best predictor in that set which makes smallest number of errors so you could think of each one of this hypothesis as experts which is going to give advise you what should be the prediction in that road now the question is which predictor you are going to choose okay in that sense we are going to just treat each of this hypothesis class as predictors and uh, or uh, yeah as uh, experts and we are going to treat them as whatever the predictions they are going to give we are going to treat that that as expert advice so let whatever the hypothesis class size is right d so we have said that this hypothesis class is finite so let's call that d so if the hypothesis class is has a size d we are going to see this is learning with the d experts okay and now when you are going to choose a expert i let's say the loss you are going to incur in that round is simply i'm going to denote it as vti so what is vti means here if you happen to pick i th expert in th round you are going to incur a loss that is what we are going to call as a vti so in this class in, in the earlier setup we have this is like if you happen to choose the i th hypothesis in round t we can define this to be this quantity so this is the loss right so what is round t telling here the round t is abstracting here okay you would have received sample xt and after you observe corresponding label if you have chosen ith hypothesis this is the loss you would have incurred okay and now i am going to say that you are go and we have already said that you can randomize right the which predictor you are going to select and you are going to uh, make a prediction in that way we can say that i am not choosing deterministically a particular expert in that round but i will put some weight or a distrib distribution on this experts and then i am going to pick a one of this expert according to this distribution and then whatever that guy gives i am going to tell that as my prediction so in that way this is going to be wit so this is the probability of in round 3 
I am subscripting it to T because this weights need not be same in every round, they themselves can keep changing. So, for example, initially you may be believing that okay, all this expert is better than this or something, you may be assigning some weights, but as you see that how this experts uh, performed, you may keep their weights, you may change their weights as time evolved. So, that is why we are indexing them with WT. And then what is the expected lot in this case? Because I am playing my choosing my experts randomly, right? And uh, I am going to incur some losses, but I would be interested now instead of the loss I incurred in that round, maybe like I want to evaluate what is the expected loss I am going to incur in that round. So, that expected loss is nothing but WTI times VTI. Right? If you have chosen i th expert in round t with weight WTI, you would have incurred this much loss. And uh, this is like i to d, and uh, these weights are such that WTI i equals to 1 to d is equals to 1 for all t. This is just a probability vector, this weights, and this is the expected loss. And uh, this one I could write it as inner product between my WT vector and VT vector. What is WT? WT is nothing but vector of weights. And uh, similarly, my VT is Vt1 all the way up to Vtd. So, is this uh, notation is fine for everybody? Yeah? So, one sequence of x k and delta. Yeah, this is for a one, one t. Like in every t, I said like there is going to be a probability. So, so the x p, like this is for, so will we be taking like supremum or something like that? Like we are taking like See, when I defined Vti into this, right? What I have done is I have kind of abstracted the sequence xt and yt in terms of only losses. Now we will be interested in whatever the way does loss sequence is generated. Now I want to see what is the best I could do. Okay, I want to minimize the total loss I am going to get over time period t, and uh, I want to see what best I could do. And uh, this total loss could be, I mean, the losses are generated by somebody, the environment in some arbitrary fashion, which I do not know, okay. So, so now just like say at any time a loss being generated, you can think of a corresponding xt and it. If some ith expert has been making that prediction, this is what it would have been. So, it is just like instead of telling, okay, yt is the label for xt, I am just saying if you happen to select ith expert in that this is the loss you are going to incur. So, in this case like now I am trying to get away from our uh, setup that okay this is the hypothesis class, these are the hypothesis, this is my sample point and this is the label, I do not care about them. What I care about is the loss I am going to incur in that round, if I happen to choose ith action, okay. So, I am going to now write this algorithm, how is this algorithm is going to look like weighted majority.
What's that? Yeah, whole thing. Understood. Whatever, like say here I have defined what is D for you, right? This is the cardinality of your hypothesis class 2 log D divided by T, a whole thing under square root. Then Yeah. So let's go through this. What I've written here. So this algorithm takes as input the parameter d, how many experts are there, and the number of rounds you are going to run. See, like compared to our standard online learning algorithm for the classification, there we didn't say what is capital T, but how many rounds we are going to run a priori. But let's say here that is known already. How many rounds are going to? We will see like how to do this when I do not know how many rounds I need to run a priori. Now based on this d and t, I am going to calculate this parameter eta which is going to be square root log d by t. You will see why this, why this parameter is required and why it looks like this. Now you are going to start, you keep maintaining weights initially on each of these experts. So initially you do not have, you do not want to be any biasing, so you kind of give equal weight to all. So this is W. So so here the superscript here they denote that time. Like here this is for the first round. That's why I just wrote one, and uh, this is like all experts are going to assign a weight one one one. And now subsequently what you are going to do, okay? There is a weight. I am going to define this another weight W t which is defined using this W tilde is as this divided by Z t here. What is Z t here? Z t is called is nothing but the summation of all the weights. Okay, so now what is how to interpret this? See W t W hat tilde is here a vector, right? It is a vector of weights. Now, what I am doing is basically I am summing all the components in that vector and dividing each vector by that sum. So, this itself is a vector now Wt. Is that clear? Now, is this Wt a probability vector? Right? So, this Wt is a probability vector. But this W tilde need not be a probability vector. Okay, but by this normalizing here with Zt, we are ensuring that the Wt we are going to get is a probability vector. And it's a Zt we are going to call it as potential, we will see later when we see it in the proof. Now, what once I have this probability vector, what I am going to do is I am going to pick ith expert with probability Wit, right. So I have assigned the weight and I am going to pick uniformly at random, I mean, I mean not uniformly at random, randomly according to the weights which is defined by this weight Wt. You understand this? Okay. Now after you play this, at the end of doing this you are going to receive a loss vector. 
that I am going to call it as Vt which is a vector of dimension d. Okay, now how, how okay at this point what is the loss vector I am receiving? See like now go back to your initial setup. You had said that after you make a prediction, you get to know the true label, right? So as soon as you have the true label, you could go back and see how each hypothesis would have done. That means I got to know the loss for every hypothesis I have. I mean that is equivalent to saying I got the loss vector for all the experts, right? That is the VT here. And then this is the expected loss you would have incurred. Even though you played a particular expert here in that round, but that, that you are doing randomly and this is the expected loss you would have incurred. Right? Is this, this is clear? The expected loss here because you are choosing expert I with probability, right? Some probability. And so if you are going to run it on the same instance, you could have chosen a different one. So you, instead of looking at exactly what the loss incurred by that expert, you would be interested in knowing what is the expected loss I would have incurred in that round. Then, okay, fine, you incurred. Now you are going to do is you are going to update the weights on your expert in this fashion. What you are going to do? The previous weight you have, you are going to multiply it by e to the power minus eta VTR. That is the loss here. So, what is happening? If the loss is high, you are kind of significantly reducing the loss, right? If the loss is small, you are not changing this weights much. So, in a way, if an expert make a mistake, you are going to penalize him and bring down his weight, much, much, uh, bring it much uh, smaller compared to the others. If that uh, expert is not making any mistake, for example, if uh, the loss is 0, you are just going to return his law, his weights, whatever in the previous case. Yes? So, In this case, yes. Right. But what I said, you are right. Like if I am going to always look them as uh, binary classifiers, so that this guy gives outputs a binary label and this is a new binary in that 0 1. But now I am saying I am kind of slightly abstracting. I am coming out of slowly that uh, binary classification mode. Now I am saying that, okay, whenever you are going to play ith expert, you are going to incur some loss. That is now a value which takes in the interval 0 1. Okay, so if you now just map it to the, to the special case we have binary classification, yes, it is either 0 or 1. 